Michigan International Speedway, a track that broke ground in 1967 just off of Highway 12 in Brooklyn, Michigan, has seen many types of racing, most notably the NASCAR Cup Series and several open wheel events, including USAC Kart and IndyCar. One car bet you haven't seen on this track before, though, is the Super Link Bottles. Well, that's the treat we have for you today for round number two of the Real Sim Racing IROC Series, powered by IRAPS. Hello and welcome one and all to RaceBot TV and Monday Night Action. I'm Nolan Rimple with Jonathan Burke beside me in the commentary box and another special twist, Dylan Coyle as our in-race reporter and finally, Pico Louise behind the cameras for today's race. The first season opener at Daytona was certainly a thrilling one just back in February and we are definitely getting set to rumble for another thrilling 50 lap event here tonight. Take a look at the schedule. We're currently running in round number two on March. A new season and a new series here on RaceBot TV, Friday Night Prime Time. We go from open wheels to closed wheels, to be exact, the GT4s and the Touring Cars. Welcome to the Imsula Michelin Pilot Challenge and the season opener for the second season of 2021. Hello, welcome one and all. I'm Nola Rempel with Stefan Schlag here beside me in the commentary box and Connery Manning in the cameras for today's presentation. Stefan, we're looking to have one heck of a season here. I think most notable about this season is the brand new McLaren 570S GT4. Went alongside the BMW M4 GT4 and the Porsche 718 Cayman GT4 Club Sport with the Audi RS3 LMS, as always, taking up the TCR class. So a new car here today, the venue, Sebring International Raceway. A 30-minute time race. Should be plenty of time to see what this brand new McLaren is made of. Bulls off to pit road. It's going to be in the hands of defending champion Lucas Slaville. Jamie Wilson starting on his outside. Laville's on the loud pedal. We are underway for the 2021 Classic Indy Garden season here at Phillip Island. It's a great launch from the top three. Still side by side though for the fifth position. Back with Troy Dolacek and Willie Schwarber. Down to turn number one we go. Will there be any contact or will we end up with the clean run here? Logan Simpson's in pit lane. So far, we are clean to the first corner. All the way out the grid. One driver with troubles though. That is Joshua Chin. Connection issues. Sees him out of race one early on. Oh no, Joshua Chin, one of the championship favorites. He is out of the race so far. Maybe he'll be able to jump back in, but without good positioning. We see some lockups here into Honda, but everyone making it through so far so oh, good. Oh, no, one car up and over. Andrew Aiken has just taken a roll through Honda. He made contact with Stephen Rossman as they were going three wide into the breaking zone. Oh no, and he's done. We'll catch the replay in just a few moments. So we come off a turn number four. Larry, the pace car driver, gets set to lead the field to the green. A hundred laps, ready to go racing for 36 cars here at Daytona International Speedway. The butt kicker 250, ready to get under the way. A pace car's off in the hands now of Blake Deer. The green flag drops Deer, gets on the left pedal. We're underway in Daytona. Great launch from that outside line there already. You can see that 11 machine on the outside line. Christopher Hill having a great shove from behind. The driver of Dalton Collins trying to get that outside line formed up quickly, but as these guys still get the speed, the inside line still holding strong. Here at the sunset bend. Base guard pulls off now. Petri's on the lap pedal. We are underway here at Sebring for 30 minutes of racing action. It's a great launch from Petri there. Not so much for Violetti, he's already got third place and Rudy Poirier going to go through into second place on the left side of him. Down to the turn number one we go here. Will they be able to give it all safe and sound? A little bit of three wide action further in the back, but so far, no contact yet. One car goes onto the dirt, but we are still clean and green here. All through to turn one for turn two. Will it be the same story? Cars still getting close. Some guys getting a bit of door-to-door -door action, but so far still completely great. Definitely the cleanest start of one of these races I have seen in a very long time. Two TCRs, though, looks to be already out of the fight. Yeah, that TCR stock looked oh! kind of like a NASCAR start, and you spoke too soon. That was uh, Norbert Leitner that just got taken out there by Mikel Garcia, the full send racing machine. Unfortunately, just got a bit too antsy in the entry of the corner, got a bit loose, could not fight back. New damage model on these machines has torn the back end of that seven clean off. Taking a look at the replay now, we're looking at the GT4 class, so check that, we're gonna look back here to that TCRs. Watch that full submachine right there, got some belt loose on the brakes, just cleans him out. 
series so naturally and is really being an aggressive driver. Oh, look at this! A potential move going around the outside into Honda. Will Lucas Laville be able to get the move done? No, and look, there's a car spin, spinning out right in front of them. It was a lap car. Now has some inside position, Nolan. Lucas Laville, he might get it, but a, but a wiggle. Big bobble there for Lucas Laville, who takes the race lead away in turn number seven. But Wilson trying to fight back through eight. They almost bang wheels now. They're racing into the final. Dolan Jack. Turn nine. Wilson is trying to find a way through. Go make contact, boys. It's just lap 17 and 68. Contact. They do it. Laville spins. Dolan Jack gets hit. Three drivers involved in a wreck for the race lead. And Lucas Laville, one of the favorites to win today. Might be out of the fight. He's taking it to pit road. No. It's an hour long race, so we have 27 minutes left to go. Kerwin getting right to the back end of Gator Myers. Gator Myers gets checked up by Marcin Pamula again, third place in uh, in the GTD Audi RS, uh, Audi RA LMS. And Casey Kerwin trying to have a go here. He might try to look on Gettermeyer. Gettermeyer goes around the outside of the Porsche in turn 13. They have to block me while it's all to close up. Kerwin's going to the pit wall. Ooh. Oh my goodness, Big Kerwin's put into the pit wall. Gettermeyer being all sorts of naughty there. Not leaving any space. We need left to right across the track. If the FIA saw that, I tell you what, they would be most displeased with that type of driving. Kerwin does get the lead done. Long way around for turn one. Here comes Nathan Block now trying to fight it back for second place. Gertemar trying to come back on Kerwin. Goodness me, that uh, that was a bit dirty there from the number four. At the R, Casey Kerwin is going to continue to stay out on the track. Block trying to go for a pass here into the pit lane. Side by side, a big locker from Nathan the Block almost sends him careening into the pit attenuator. But Block manages to hang on to the machine as uh, Gertemar already just driving through all the pit stalls he likes to, it seems. Block is forced to eventually yield on the spot to avoid a running him over. Goodness gracious, that was mighty close for Block, though, on the pit entry. He tried to go for the pass on the entry. Uh, didn't quite work out for him. Really doesn't yeah. fight this. Price is almost letting Bowie go, but got to remember, as these tires rubber in and as they grow, get more worn down, it becomes harder and harder to pass there. And as Price really just squeezes in on Bowie's door, that's when he starts to start to pull ahead just a little bit more in that 22 machine. So we're side by side for the race lead on lap number 34, coming to 16 laps to go. Bump draft from David Washington nearly goes wrong. Almost puts Price into the outside wall. And that's going to allow Brandon Bowie to take the race lead and turn number four. And he will be leading lap number 34. Yeah, but that momentum on the top side is keeping that 22 and the 98 into it, unfortunately. They may have lost the side by side, but yeah, there it is. Here's that big straight line speed. They're already back side by side with Brandon Bowie. And so close as Bowie cuts off Stove Price Jr. on the top side. Bit of a bobble though for Bowie. Gets that back end loose. That's going to give the advantage here to Nick Silver, who's going to go to the front. One car spinning way in the background. Michael Moser slides the inside, but he saves it. Three wide for the race lead now, almost four as Nick Silver goes to take the race lead. Stoke Price Jr. trying to fight the middle. Brandon Bowie way on the top side, and Silver's going to take the race lead as they now go three wide for the second position, almost looking four wide for the race lead. We are going to be part of the race lead. No! Silver gets dumped outside. Wall caution flags out, and this will be the big one. Bowie slides to the inside, and he's going to take out several drivers, including Matthew Mara, and I believe Mats uh, Matsumi oh. Mara cut him as well. Mother hard cut that into the wall as Nicholas Marr gets into it as well. Bad run though for Freitas off the floor on corner, but even worse for Simmons who gets into the grass. That's going to give Freitas a huge head of steam here in the run down the Ullman straight, so we could see a pass here. Cut him into the sunset bend. Freitas is going to look to the right side of the racetrack. Simmons is not going to go defensive, so Simmons is going to have to hold on the long way around sunset bend. He wants to maintain the race lead. They're still side by side. Freak is stepping that back end of a little bit to the middle of the corner, but gets the pass done. Here it comes. Harris trying to pick up second position. He's going to put dip two tires into the grass. Yeah, Harris a little bit too aggressive there on that pass, but look at that. George Simmons back to the inside. One car goes way off just in front of these guys, and that was the one GT4s that sweep wide, giving these guys some room. Now Simmons runs wide through turn one. 
Freed is going to have to cut back here for two, but he is not going to be able to do it. And somehow, George Simmons maintains the race lead after all of that in the battle for the TCR race lead. And we're already a third of the way through this race. Rebound is, of course, uh, right now, it's uh, Ville uh, Ilovander who is closing in fast on that BMW. I took a look at the rear here from Hyman. Villeman's going to go to the outside of the 24 car, deep on the brakes, trying to pass around the outside. Going to get the move done just barely. Christopher Hyman now trying to cut back as they exit Tamborello in the run-up to the Villeneuve chicane. Imola is very much a momentum track. It's a track where you have to be able to roll the car through the corners because you're just not going to be able to get it on outright speed. It's not like Monza where it's just hard on the brakes and hard on the gas and you're going to be fine. You really need to know how to roll the car to the center of the corners. It's a lot like Laguna Seca in that regard. I mean, that's a track as well where you really have to be careful with how you roll the car to the center, especially this middle section of the track. I mean, this section right here, the Mineral Complex. This is... Oh! And the Corvette gets dumped! by Carrera Martins, who I don't think expected him to come back across the track like that. I think that Gertemeyer is a tiny bit faster um, in just regular pace. So Kerwin might have his work cut out for him, but I'll tell you what, if Gertemeyer catches Kerwin, oh boy, that's, uh, it might end in tears for one of them today. Uh, the gap is about 1.2 seconds and you need about a second to really be able to hang on to the draft. So right now, Grunemar is just barely hanging on at the tail end of the draft. And as you can see from the Delta, that gap is coming down by just a few hundreds of a second. Absolutely. Yep. And, you know, we just need to say again, the uh, the rookies are doing unbelievable. And it's funny to call them rookies because they probably have a lot of experience in these cars. But even though it's not an official iRacing used car anymore, they're, uh, they're putting on quite a show with the top two fighting for it. Remember I said earlier that this would not happen? Well, now I'm eating pro. <laughs> Molnar is still keeping nice and close to Greece, trying to find a way through. That number 16 car has been on fire all day long. So has Matt Molnar to be able to recover up to the 8th position as well as he has over the course of the day. Like I said, 25 spots gained from Molnar from his tail of the grid start uh, coming into today's race in just half a second now separate seventh and eighth place this is a race has it's kind of settled off at this point in time but boy it was non-stop action and drama throughout the first you know 42 43 laps of this race and now Molnar gets so close for the MG hairpin driving through the last of the left-handers now it is just so tight between these guys and I can guarantee you here oh Greece flips the curves that's not what you want to do for the final quarter here that gives Molnar a huge head of steam all the way down the pit straightaway. He's going to look to the right here for turn number one. Maurice, can he try to fight the outside line for turn one? No, he can't. So just like that, put Molnar back up to seven. Oh. Martins is out first, but right behind is Debrito. So this uh, this might get a little bit hairy here. If uh, so, this is going to be. And this is uh, another battle in the pits one uh, in the pits here between uh, Stag and Burriswell that's in the pit road. So Burriswell right now, sorry, Matthew Stag on the track right now. He's having a struggle with the BMW though, and he's not wanting to let that BMW through at all. He knows he needs to keep that BMW behind him. So Stag is going to be out of pit, uh, going to be past the pit road right now. Burriswell is already out of his pit box and crawled into the pit lane. That's him right there. Watch from Matthew Stagg here. He's just now across the start finish line. Burswell might have beaten him out. There's Burswell out of the pits. Matthew Stagg's right there with the BMW, who's really covering here. They're going to go three wide for a brief moment there. Stagg just barely passes him back on the pit exit. Yeah, I thought uh, Stagg was going to lose out there after being held up by traffic, and amazingly, he managed to keep, keep the lead in GTD, and thought Burswell has got it all to do again. Not close enough. Martins is going to have to wait a couple more corners. And now, Rito's being held up by Anton and Titus in the GTD machine. It's so close to the back end. They're going to go three wide to get around him. Oh, my goodness me. Mercedes onto the grass. Somehow saves it. Martins trying to cut back on a left and right to the chicane. How in the world did they not just wreck there? <laughs> might be a hard fought battle here. Because he is struggling right now to get him back. So Nathan Block, what can he do? He's gonna have to go on the run here down in the turn number one. We'll have to keep eyes on this battle. Meanwhile, for Casey Kerwin, we'll cut back to this fight in just a second because Casey Kerwin is right now through turn 13, the last corner on the racetrack. So the battle for eighth 
Still raging on for Casey Kerwin, though. It's a well-earned victory at Indianapolis Motor Speedway at long last in LMP2. Just behind, Bo Albert takes victory in GTLM. Matthew Stegg still has one more lap to go, and he is just now through turn number one. The battle for eighth, though, is yet to be decided. Yep, and uh, Nathan Block got the position uh, uh, by the looks of it, so he's uh, managed to gain a position on the last lap, and... Uh, yeah, pretty much, yeah a, a decent recovery from Nathan, nevertheless. Cesar Cabral is just trying to hang on to ninth place now. He's still got Carl Johan haggling just behind. It was no doubt going to be haggling his mirrors and trying to find any kind of way through here on the final lap for turn 12 for the last time today. And Julian Bell's out of fuel. Julian Bell's out of fuel in the number 23 machine. For the, so for the second time the season, the car is out of fuel. Block takes the position for now seventh place. Cabral goes to eighth. Hagelin to ninth. Bell's not gonna, might not finish the race here. He's just crawling through the final corner. This is absolutely a heartbreaking sight. Matthew Stegg is just approaching the GTD class leader. Just gonna pass him now. Right there was the GTD class leader. Oh my dearie me. And it looks like a Porsche is out of fuel as well, just behind him, limping to the line as Bo Rigger, just at the tail end of the field, motor not running. Stag wins it for GTD. And Julian Bell struggling. And so is, I believe, uh, oh, dearie me, this is, this is just All a... of the cards at this point happened up here. Bodar locks up big time. Garis is still trying to find a way to get back through with the battle for sixth place. Now Garis oh. locks up. These guys just cannot keep it together for more than three quarters. No one can seem to keep it together on track in this race. So many self spins and so many incidents involving other cars, Nolan. Oh my goodness. We'll take the script uh, that was set up probably for the storybook end of the race and just burn it in a bonfire because Ethan Hagen is the upset winner here today. He is now just coming up to MG for the final time today. Ethan Hagen upsets Dolan Check. What would have been a very good win for the 37 machine. Thanks to Schwabauer's mistake. Over. Ethan Hagen just has one more corner to make it, and he's off the final corner. Ethan Agan, of all people, wins the season opener. Finishing it off from third place on the grid. He takes the win. Dolchek has to settle for second place. Defending champion LaVille recovers beautifully to third. The battle for sixth, though, still raging. Garis has one lap to get the stun. They got Josh Bear lap trapped and find a way through. Molnar gets cut off. Oh my goodness, this race is unbelievable right now, and we're coming to the very last of it. Molnar, now he goes wide, so does Garis. Who's going to have the momentum going into the final corners? Molnar still has to get past Josh Baird. He cannot sit behind that 20 or he is going to get caught up by Dennis Garis. He has to find a way through, he's got to do it quickly here. He does have a lot of time. Garis is closing so quickly. Down to the MG, we ride on board with Molnar, locked up from Molnar. Right on the board, Dennis Garis. Can he get by? Josh Bear without any difficulties. Into the final Lap corner. Lap traffic. He gets out of again. Here comes Dennis Garis. Can he get the run? He's in the corner. No, he cannot. Matt Bonar hangs on for sixth place. Dennis Garis is going to be in seventh. They're a bit crazy in the back, but we will make it. Yes, white flag is out. The race is official. It's ending this lap. Everhart is all over the back end of Dominic Howe. He's got to try to fend him off somehow, some way. Everhart is going to try to go once again with the over-under. He's going to get the inside wide off of turn number two, and Everhart gets the nose in there. Off of the corner, stepping that back end out, though, as he tries to get clear. Dominic Howe is going to be able to get clear, though. He's going to block Everhart all the way down the track, almost onto the apron. Everhart, though, still racing them clean. Three and four, final time today, side by side for the race lead on the final lap of round two of the IROC series for uh, real sim racing. Everhart comes off the final corner. Nobody can get to him in time. Here comes Howe trying to fight back. Rewind to the line. But Everhart takes the win by just 36 thousandths of a second. The 90 car gets it done. We are going to bring in some of these drivers here to give us a bit of a chat here at the end of this one. And we are going to kick things off with race winner Daniel Everhart. Oh my gosh, what a finish there at the end of this one, Daniel. You uh, started 16th place, came home, though, to take victory 
in dramatic fashion. Oh, heck yeah. Uh, that was fun, man. Uh, I hate that it had so many cautions and the race didn't kind of get on its feet until the end. But, you know, that's, you know, that's what happens when everybody feels, you know, we're equal and uh, we were equal. I mean, it's kind of cool to have all the guys and you can see the different uh, levels of talent, but you have the car there that everybody can show off what they got. So it's really fun. There's no really tire saving, none of that. And uh, just puts on a great race, and it's really fun to drive these things at uh, kind of like a super speedway. That's what we're kind of talking about all race long was how draft heavy these cars are going to be. Of course, uh, it is important noted as well that you guys did have the new body template uh, for this race today. That no doubt played uh, into some big factors here. But let's uh, come on down to the green white checkered finish because I think that is what the big talking point is right now. You were trying to look for a very decisive pass. Uh, right before on the restart before you weren't able to get it done though you were able to get it done though in time for the white fly so as you go to make those moves what goes through your mind as you try to go for the lead uh you're constantly thinking you're always wanting to figure out where you can back up your corner and kind of get on the gas uh, a little quicker than they do especially like dominic he was at a disadvantage with no tires uh he was uh he's really quick all night it just when you have no tires it just it just kills you but for some reason this car i've never drove it like this before but it feels like the tires don't really matter as much so that was pretty cool uh kind of feel like it feels like uh the uh the laps on the tires didn't go away like it does so bad in like a cup car or a, or a xfinity car so that was pretty cool and uh you just got to time it and i backed up my corner and got a good run down the back straight away he tried blocking me and when you go off into the corner straight in these cars you can turn the car with the throttle really well so and when the rear end squatted and I got in the throttle, I just got a big enough run, and he kind of shoved up a little bit on the motor tires, so I got a good run off the four and uh, coming to the start finish line. Let's kind of look forward to the next race here, which is going to be uh, in April. Uh, it's going to be Kansas Speedway for a 75-lap race. Uh, that's going to be a pretty interesting track, too. Not nearly as draft-heavy as these ones will be. Uh, not quite a super speedway-ish, but do you reckon you'll have a good shot at there to go for another win? In race number three? Heck yeah, I believe this little IROC car will do it. I mean, uh, I was just uh, happy to use my new template on uh, Dylan Cole's rear bumper coming to that restart tonight. I think that was the best thing uh, I've ever uh, had to do in this uh, sim on, R <laughs> on RSR. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I <laughs> I'm happy that I didn't lead to you wrecking out. <laughs> no, no, it can't be any worse than Evan was tonight. So, uh, ding, ding. But, uh, no, it was all fun, and uh, it, that's what it's all about. And uh, thanks for IRAPS coming on the series, uh, Nolan, and uh, RSR for putting this thing on and broadcasting it this year. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, and also, got to just thank all my teammates and SK Sim Racing first and foremost for everything they do and uh, and you guys. And, uh, well, real quick, before we let you go, it sounds like you've already had a lot of them covered, but anybody else that you'd like to shout out for us here before we let you go? Uh, yeah, uh, I got to thank my grandma who watches each and every race, my fiance who sits at her, her house just watching it, uh, ready to get her own place so we can, uh, so you can celebrate with me on these things. So, but, uh, yeah, and, uh, the good Lord above, cause without him and none of this would be possible. So thank you guys. And thank you for coming out and taking the time to join us tonight. Congratulations on a well-deserved win, Daniel. We'll see you next month at Kansas. Yes, sir.